Consider the following situation. Jupiter is the most massive planet in our solar system. Its gravity is 76 feet per second squared compared to Earth's 32 feet per second squared. The data below represent the height of the rocket launched, the height of a rocket launched from a hill on Jupiter. If we look at the data points here, here we have T. T represents the time in seconds, and this is our input value. So sometimes we can think of this in terms of t, but because it's our inf input, we can also think of it in terms of x, which is sometimes helpful when we're um, using other programs to do calculations. j of t represents the height of the um, rocket on Jupiter in feet. And again, since this is our output, that will correlate with a y value. The next question asks us to use technology to determine a quadratic regression model for this situation. Notice a couple of pieces of important wording here. We, here we see the word regression. Um, regression is a process where we take the data points and come up with the, an equation that's a best fit for it. In this particular case, what we want is we want a quadratic equation that is going to be the best fit. We've done linear in the past to see if we have a graph that where the points kind of connect to, to get a dot or to get a line. Here what we're doing is we're trying to get a graph where the dots connect to get a parabola. And if you look at what the heights are doing, see they start smaller, they get bigger, and then they start coming back down again. The points actually seem to make a smoother curve correlating with the parabola instead of with the line. You could do a linear regression um, on t using technology and you would get a you would get an equation, it just wouldn't be a very good one or a very good predictor, and a quadratic model will be a much better one in this case. In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve this problem using Excel. If you are interested in seeing this solved using graphing calculator, um, you should watch the video just previous to this one um, in the class playlist. All right, so the first thing that you want to do when you're trying to solve the problem using Excel is to load up Excel. We want to enter all of our input values here in column A, and then we want to input all of our output values here in column B. Let's get started. Okay, so for uh, our times are our inputs, and they're fairly simple here. Uh, one, two, three, four, and five seconds that we've been um, making measurements. Next, we want to go up to column B, and now we want to enter the different heights. We had 290, followed by 470, then 590, 620, and then back down to 575 at the five second mark. All right. Once you have all the data entered, again, we're going to, just like with linear, we're going to highlight everything. We're going to go to the Insert menu, and we want it to do a scatter plot. So we look under Charts, look for the one that looks like a scatter plot, and choose the first option there. When you look at the dots here, you can see that a parabola is going to be a great fit for it. See how it comes up like this and comes back down? We, can, we could make a pretty smooth looking parabola out of those dots. Well, let's see how good the calculator or the, the computer does here with us. So how do we do it? We start here again with the plus symbol. We're going to click on trend line. Now right now what it's done is it's put a line in there. That's not what we want quite. So let's go down here to more options. When you click on the more options, right now notice that the linear bubble is checked. We want a quadratic function. A quadratic function is actually a polynomial with order 2. Um, the reason that it's ordered 2 is because squared is the highest power in our function. So that's the piece that we want to do in there. Let's go ahead and scroll down a little bit. Just like before, we want to make sure that we display the equation on the chart. That's what we're interested in finding is that equation of best fit. And it's also a nice idea to go ahead and put the r squared value on the chart. And then this will work very similarly to what we, see, what we saw with linear. Once you've got those marked, we'll go ahead and close this. Um, we can delete that if we want, just so it's a little bit easier to look at. So I took the linear one out, and man, look how nice that curve is fitting. So if you have trouble seeing, remember that you can just move these little boxes somewhere where you can read it a little bit easier. And here we've got our best fit equation, and notice it's a quadratic equation. We've got an x squared, an x, and a plain number term. So when we come over here, oh, maybe I didn't want to write it over there because now I can't see it there. We'll put it down here. All right, let's try that. So when we go to determine our quadratic regression model, uh, that is what we see right here. y equals negative 38.571x squared plus 303.43x plus 23. So there's our model, and that's all that the question's asking us for in part A. 
Part B says, based on our model, what is the height of the launching tower? It seems like kind of a strange question up front. Um, what we're looking for is we're looking for a height, so we're trying to find an output. And what we would need to do if we're looking for the launching tower is think about well, where would we be? Well, when we launch the rocket, it's right at the very beginning of our measurement, right? So we're looking at t equals zero. So really, if we want to find the height of the launching tower, we can find it just by plugging zero into our quadratic model. Negative 38.571 times zero squared, so that's gone, plus 303.43 times zero, that's gone too, plus 23. And we end up with 23 feet for our launching tower. This correlates with the vertical intercept of our quadratic function in this particular case, um, and that would be where the rocket would have had to have launched from. The last question in our little example here asks us, based on our model, when will the rocket hit the surface of Jupiter? Well, if you think of what's going on, and you can kind of look at the picture here, right? So we started down here at 23 feet. It's going to go up, up, up. It's going to come back, and then it's going to come down somewhere, and it's going to crash. So we're expecting some time after five seconds here. It's going to come down, and it's going to hit Jupiter. And it, when it hits Jupiter, it will be at um, height zero. So what we want to do is we want the height to be zero, and this time we want to solve for x. And again, we kind of can use x and t interchangeably in terms of our input values. All right, so all I have to do is solve this equation now. At this point, keep in mind that um, I have an x squared and an x term, so bad news there. I can't combine those in at, as they're not like terms. What that means instead is I either need, I always need to get one side equal to zero, which we have, awesome, and then I'm going to wrap it up by uh, using the quadratic formula with messy terms like this. There's no way factoring is going to be an effective tool. So we're going to let a be negative 38.571, we're going to let b be 303.43, and c of course will then be 23. All right, so we're just going to go through the process of solving using the quadratic formula. Remember that's negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. All right, so negative 303.43 plus or minus the square root of that 303.43 squared minus 4 times negative 38.571 times 23. And then the whole thing is going to be divided by 2 times negative 38.571. All right, let's simplify each of our little sections there. So I have negative, where did we go here? There we are. Negative 303.43 plus or minus the square root of, you know what, let me pull up my calculator for this one. I need to do 303 squared. minus 4 times negative 38.571 times 23 gives me 95,357.532 inside the radical there. And I'm going to divide it by 2 times negative 38.57. And that's negative 77.14 on the bottom. All right. Uh, quadratic equation, so I'm expecting two answers. I get one by using the plus in this expression and one by using the minus. Let's do the plus first. Negative 3303.43 plus radical 95,357.532 all divided by negative 77.14. Let's see what we get when we do that. So negative 303.43 plus radical 95357.532. So that gives me 5.37 on top divided by negative 77.14. I'm going to get a negative solution from that. And that's negative 0 0.069, so negative 0 0.07. All right, so there's my first value. When I come over here, um, let's find the minus one this time. So this time I'm going to do negative 303.43 minus 
radical 95357.532 divided all divided by the negative 77.14 all right, let's see what we get. Negative 303.43 minus this time radical 9537.532 gives me negative 401.09. Divide that by negative 77.14. I get 5.19 seconds. Having a negative solution here doesn't really make any sense. Um, over here we get a positive solution, which should make more sense. However, it should be a lot later than 5 seconds. So I wonder what we did wrong here. Here it is. Look, I, I missed a digit here in my in my radical, so let's do that again. Negative 303.43 minus the square root of 95357. Get all those digits in there. 0.532. There we go. That looks better. So when we do that subtraction there on the top, that gives us a negative 612.23. Divide that by negative 77.14. And we get a final solution of 7.937 seconds. And this one makes sense um, because seven, almost eight seconds later, then that rocket will have gotten back to hit the ground. Whereas the negative solution doesn't make any sense. We weren't collecting any data before the rocket got launched. Um, so again, if your questions, if your points tend to be in more of a parabolic type of shape, I really recommend using a quadratic regression instead of a linear regression. And in fact, if you look at our R squared value, look at how great this is, 0.9993. Just like with linear regression, the closer that that R value is to 1, the better of a fit the data is to that equation. And in this per particular case, this equation here, messy as it may look, is a pretty darn good representation of the data that we have um, from the rocket launch.